Hey guys, so this is going to be part of a six video uh, playlist in which I'll be explaining my personal weekly workout split. Um, every exercise that I include in this split is backed up by some form of research. Uh, and obviously it is important to uh, realize that you guys do not have to follow this exactly how I present it. Uh, adapt it to yourself, adapt it to your goals, and adapt it to your weaknesses. Um, so the split I run is formally called push-pull legs. Uh, and it could look something like this. So obviously we want to build the muscle in the least amount of time. And what we start doing is we forget about rest, we forget about its importance, and we start working out every day thinking that, that will yield the most results. It's important to realize uh, what actually happens to your body when you're lifting weights in the gym. So you're producing micro tears in the muscle. And what your body does and how it grows is it repairs these micro tears uh, and you get bigger. So if you don't give your body the amount of time it needs to repair the tears, to replenish all the macromolecules, um, the energy sources that fuel the body, then you're, you're just going into the zone of overtraining and you never want to go into overtraining because it re can result in a lot of injuries and it can leave you out for a considerable amount of time. This video will be focusing on day one, which is a push workout. And this means we will be training uh, chest, shoulders, and the triceps. So I'm pretty sure you guys are all familiar with the bench press as an exercise. And I just want to run by the benefits as well as uh, form because I do see a lot of people just doing the exercise in the wrong form. So what I do like about this exercise, it's very conducive to progressive overload. And what I mean by that is it's very easy to make the exercise harder. It's very easy to add more tension to the muscle to make it grow over time. Um, and obvious ways of doing that is either increasing the amount of repetitions that you do in a set or increasing the weight. Uh, however, there are other ways like decreasing rest time between the sets. So the bench press is proven to be correlated with uh, pec thickness and uh, tricep thickness. And this is supported by research by Ogosaura et al. Um, and as you can see here, uh, the upward trend between an increased uh, bench to thickness in both the tricep and the chest. So this is a very good main exercise to start off your uh, workout. Uh, it's a compound exercise. So in a push day, like I said, we're focusing on training the triceps, the chest, and the shoulders. And this trains all of them. So common mistakes I see with the bench press in terms of form is that people fail to keep their legs planted on the floor uh, as well as their glutes on the bench. And I usually see this when uh, towards uh, the last three reps of the set. So it is important to adjust the weight accordingly to make sure it's not too heavy. Um, uh, obviously, it's very important to keep your form uh, because you might be bringing in different muscle groups to aid in lifting that weight and you never want to do that. So as you can see, I like to adapt a slight arch uh, when I'm performing the exercise. And what I found from experience is this allows me to lift considerably more weight. Um, I also like to uh, adopt a wider grip when I'm holding the bar. Uh, so a good rule of thumb is uh, when looking at the grips in the bar, um, I like to keep a thumb's distance between where my hand is placed and the end of the grip. There is some evidence to suggest that adopting a closer grip uh, increases activation of the upper pecs. So if that's what you're trying to improve, then I would recommend adopting a closer grip. Um, it is practical to change around between a wide grip and a close grip. So maybe day one, adopt a wider grip, lift more weights, uh, with less repetitions and uh, the second day of the split you can adopt a closer grip uh, with while lifting uh, less weight 
but with higher reps. So the next exercise I like to do is the seated incline cable fly, which is a chest isolation exercise. And I like to do this at a 45 degree angle. Uh, there is some research by Trev Vital that suggests that this elicits uh, the most chest activation. What I like about this variation using uh, cable instead of dumbbells is that you feel constant tension both at the bottom of the movement and at the top. Uh, when using dumbbells, most of the tension is felt at the bottom, but there's very minimal tension at the top, uh, which does affect the gains. As you can see, I do like to extend the range of motion uh, by crossing my arms. And uh, what this does is it gives you more of a contraction. And I've seen uh, a lot more chest development after I started doing that. So I definitely recommend it. So the next exercise is a shoulder isolation exercise, uh, the standing dumbbell press. And you, might, uh, you guys might be more used to the seated dumbbell press. Uh, I see a lot more often in the gyms. I don't see a lot of people doing this exercise, but there is some uh, evidence to suggest that uh, this does elicit more activation uh, in the side delts, posterior and anterior delts. So in terms of activation, this is the way to go. However, you need to keep in mind that you will not be able to lift as heavy weights. Um, so obviously, do what makes you feel comfortable. But I do recommend uh, this variation of the exercise because uh, we, with the bench press, we already took care of the heavy uh, main movement of the day. So it is important to also focus on activation of the muscle. So the next exercise is the Egyptian lateral raise. Um, I just want to quickly talk about uh, front delts. Uh, usually uh, with people who lift weights, uh, it's very common to see overdevelopment of the front delts because there are a lot of compound exercises uh, that work it, including the bench press and uh, dumbbell pressing as well, focusing on the front delts as a secondary muscle. Um, so in my particular workout routine, I do not uh, include any front raises. Uh, I usually focus on the side delts because they are usually lagging uh, with me and with a lot of people. Uh, so the Egyptian lateral raise does focus on side delt activation. And why I favor this exercise over uh, lateral raises or any form of upright rowing is uh, that there is some evidence uh, by McMahon et al to suggest that uh, this variation of the movement uh, takes away from the stress of on the rotator cuff and uh, puts more tension on the side delts and I found when performing the movement it's a lot easier uh, when you put uh, pull the cable through your legs uh, I feel like it allows me to maintain a constant form and uh, it elicits more activation in uh, my side delts. The next exercise is the tricep pushdown to target the triceps in isolation. Of course, both the bench press and the standing dumbbell press utilize the tricep as a secondary muscle, so there isn't necessarily a need for isolation work. However, if your triceps are lagging, I definitely recommend incorporating this exercise into your routine. And finally, the last exercise is uh, dips. And I like to focus more on uh, chest dips. Um, and this is just an exercise I've been doing uh, during quarantine. Obviously, gyms are back open now. But I did see a lot of uh, chest development. Uh, I saw a lot of progress in the exercise. And I just adapted it into the workout. I feel like as I grow, uh, hopefully, as my weight increases, uh, the exercises, the exercise becomes harder, uh, so there is always a sense of progressive overload. And uh, I do advocate for uh, body weight exercises and the inclusion of them in uh, workout routines. So yeah, hopefully you guys found this helpful. I'll be putting the full workout in the description with the number of reps and the number of sets. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything, uh, feel free to put it in the comment section. Uh, I'll be looking at that and I, I'm looking forward to answering any questions that you guys have. Thank you for watching.